won't be before you long. Every preacher probably says that, but I really won't be before you long. Um, but I'm going to Psalm 34, 19. And I'm going to read three different versions in your hearing. New King James Version says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. New Living Translation says, The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. The Amplified Version says, Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from them all. And my topic for this morning is simply, but the Lord. But the Lord. People of God, I've come to realize in my newly 30 years of living that there are times that even when the strong get weak and weary and well-doing, yeah. times when we cannot utter a profound prayer, times when our tears fa fail to translate into words, there are times when the ones that press their way to church on Sundays, press their way to prayer and Bible study every week, lead you into worship, preach until you get delivered, feel a little faint while they're trying to fight while experiencing a little fear. So we come to church so we can hold on to the good fight of faith because we realize as a people it was nothing but the Lord that has kept us through some things, some people, and some places that were intended to take us out of here. And I know many of us are Bible readers, so we know that 2 Corinthians 4 simply reminds us that we are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. But yet, there are times when we are afflicted, affected, tensed, and troubled. We are afflicted every time we see another black and brown body lose their life due to police brutality and the guilty continue to walk away free time and time again. There are times when we are afflicted, affected, intense, and troubled as we continue to see a white supremacist in the White House who continues to expose himself on a daily basis as a sexist, racist, and so much more. I'll leave it alone. There are times when we are afflicted anytime we witness women being dismissed, discarded, objectified, disrespected, and assaulted, whether it's physically or figuratively. We are afflicted. In this world, we will face afflictions, afflicted through racism, afflicted through sexism, afflicted through classism. And I don't know what your affliction is or what your afflictions are this morning, but I came to let you know that the Bible still says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all, but the Lord rescues them out of them all, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. And what the enemy meant for evil, God will still turn it around for your good because we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his promise. So we have to remember that and be confident in this one thing, that he that begun a good work is able to complete it. And he's still the God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. So here we are in the book of Psalms where we learn that it is a collection of prayers and songs composed throughout the history of Israel. 
It is here in this Old Testament of the book of Psalms where sometimes called the Psalter where we find that Psalms generally falls into certain types of genres that reflect usage in various contexts. Therefore, you will find prayers of help, songs of praise and instructions for your life right here in the book of Psalms. And this morning, our text comes from the 34th chapter in the book of Psalms. Psalm 34 is divided into two parts, verses 1 through 10, where it expresses thanksgiving, and verses 11 to 22, where the writer assumes the role of a teacher and attempts to teach the readers to fear the Lord. It is here in the book of Psalm 34 where the writer gives thanks to the Lord for helping him during his time of trouble. The writer lets us know that as believers, or what he refers to as the righteous, that we are not excused, excluded, or exempt from troubles of this world, but even in those times when we face troubles, ultimately, the Lord still delivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord delivers from our fears, our foes, and our fail failures. The Lord will deliver us out of them all. Reality is that there are many ways that the Lord delivers one from their trouble, yeah. which we see all throughout our text, such as verse 4 where it says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And verse 17 right here in Psalm 34 simply says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is a deliverer. Our chosen text for this morning is simply telling us that there are afflictions in our lives, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all, which is the present time. Uh, there shall be afflictions in our lives, but the Lord shall deliver us out of our troubles, which is the future. But I'm taking this, and, and, and I lastly came to remind you uh, that there were afflictions in your life, but the Lord delivered you out of them all, which is past tense. And I just came to remind some Somebody to look back over your life and think about all the times the Lord has delivered you out of all your afflictions. The Lord brought you out of, see, sometimes our present circumstances causes us to forget about our past victories. But this morning, I provoke your spirit to have a memory recall so you have enough strength to get through what you're going through even now. Because reality is that there are times that God will reveal his proclamation over our lives before he produces his manifestation. But on our journey to manifestation comes frustration out of desperation because all we see is our afflictions in front of us. But this morning, I came to encourage you that you can't always look at what you see, but we have to trust what God said in his word. And then we have to strengthen ourselves in prayer and through praise, which is why I'm so glad you were able to press your way to the house of the Lord one more time so you can, so you can participate with the psalmist in the first part of the text, which brings me to my first point, which is praise God in the process so you can keep your perspective. Yeah. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I hope you didn't close your Bibles, because this psalm is good to 
my spirit. These first three verses let us know that even in times of adversity, afflictions, trials, and tribulations, difficulties, distress, or disaster, a praise is always in order. And my question is, can anybody testify that there were moments in your life when your tears were your meat night and day? Moments when you literally felt like you couldn't get a praise out your mouth. But then somehow you found enough strength in your suffering just to say, God, I still bless you even in this. <laughs> And then one line turned into a prayer, and your prayer led you into a praise, and your praise led you into worship, and somehow you were able to press your way through just because you opened up your mouth and said, God, I need you. See, the psalmist David understood what it meant to bless God in his frustration. Because at the point of our text, David's fortunes were now at his lowest ebb. David had fled from the court of Saul on fighting that Saul was determined to put him to death. Yeah. So by the time of our text, he hoped to find a safe refuge, but he had been disappointed. He was at the point of becoming a fugitive and an outlaw, a dweller in dens and caves of the earth, but even in the midst of his pity and anger and disappointment yeah. and frustration, yeah. he still had a song of thanksgiving on his heart. Yeah. He still had a praise yeah. in his mouth. He simply said he will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in his mouth. He was able to praise God because of his relationship. See, he was able to praise God because of his relationship with God. Because his relationship with God was not wavered because of his circumstances. He was able to praise God because he knew based on his relationship with God, that God was able to deliver him, not merely from things he feared, but from fear itself. People of God, that's why we just can't be religious, but we have to have a relationship with God. You are able to face adversity and affliction and still praise God when you have a relationship with God. Because when you have a relationship with God, you give your heart to God and allow him to take uh, you take over all things in your life. You don't always understand his plans, but you trust his arrangements. When you have a relationship with God, you walk with him, and you talk with him, and you know that he's your friend. And even when you're disappointed with the decision your friend makes, you still know that your friend will never leave you and never forsake you. So the psalmist is showing that his praise shall continually be in our mouths because of our relationship with him. Continually be in our mouths. Continually be in our mouths. Continually, meaning without interruption, no matter how we feel, no matter matter what's going on. Yes, some days are good. Yes, some days are bad. But even when you're experiencing anger in your affliction, even when you feel the pressure from your pain, even when your fear contradicts your faith, even when you're experiencing gloomy days because of the grief, his praises shall continually, constantly, endlessly, perpetually, eternally, always and forever be in your mouth. His praise! shall continually be in our mouth. Then David calls on Israel to praise the Lord with him because it got so good. And the praise will get so good to you like it got to David where you can't keep it to yourself, but you will find yourself encouraging others even in your pain. Have you ever had to encourage any? 
anybody else while you felt like you were going through yourself. Pastor, how many times have you had to preach even while you were in pain, but you will look at the people and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And then if we keep looking at the text, Throughout this one division of Psalm, I counted the word delivered four times. See, my second point is God's defense provokes our deliverance. In our text, we see that deliverance is so imperative, so much so that between verses 4 through 7 alone, you see it twice when it says in verse 4, deliver me from all my fears. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 7 says, and deliver them. To deliver in the Hebrew is translated as nastel, meaning to be snatched out, to rescue, to save, and to recover. Can anyone remember all the times the Lord came to your defense and delivered you out of dysfunction. How many times the Lord came to your defense and snatched you out of those situations? How many times the Lord came to your defense and rescued you from those relationships? How many times the Lord came to your defense and saved you while you felt like sinning? How many times the Lord came to your defense and rescued you while you felt like running from your call? Hello, lights. Yeah. And any time we needed to be delivered, snatched out, rescued, saved, or recover, we can identify at verse with verse six because when we cried out, the Lord heard us and saved us out of all our troubles. The Lord saves the poor. The Lord saves the brokenhearted. The Lord saves those who cry out to him. And verses 7 through 18 shows us that the Lord sees and the Lord hears. Yes. It shows us that the Lord is deeply attentive to his children's needs yeah. and actions. The Lord is a safe refuge for all those who will turn to him. I'm walking through the text now. The Lord provides relief and is the basis for hope in this life and the one who we can call. These verses 7 through 18 teaches us that those who fear the Lord will lack no good thing. But then a switch happens in the text when it talks about Christian ethics. Ah. One thing I often tell my young people back at home is that once your mindset changes, your attitude will change. And once your attitude will change, your behavior will change. And the reason why I feel responsible as a preacher to highlight Christian ethic in the text is because there are too many times when we are ignoring one's character because of their gift. And listen, y'all, I just turned 30 October 29th, and the older I get, the less I care about somebody's gift, but the more I care about somebody's character. Yeah, and living in the year of 2018 with number 45 as president, I came to remind y'all that the Bible gives us important and clear instructions and it's so direct, Pastor, that I don't even have to exegete these next two verses. Listen, the Bible says in verse 13, look at your Bibles. I want everybody to open your Bibles. Look at your Bible, Psalm 34, 13. Read it, read it. It says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Verse 14 says, turn from evil and somebody's reading their Bible. Seek peace. Come on, Bible readers, listen. This part can be hard at times, but we have to remember that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we don't want to hold up our health and our deliverance because we keep speaking negatively over our circumstances. Oh. Which brings me to my last point. I think it's important for us this morning to move. And my third point is that we need to move from affliction to abundance. 
but the Lord delivered them out of them all. The Hebrew word for the affliction is ra. Somebody say ra. ra. Yes, you just learned a Hebrew word, meaning unpleasant, unhappiness, unkind, worse than evil and wicked. And some of you are experiencing affliction on your job because some people are waiting for you to quit so they can take your position. Oh yeah, God gave me this word specifically for y'all this week, okay? You just don't understand why your boys, boys treat you so unfairly. Some of you, some of them are waiting for you to leave, waiting for you to fail, waiting for you to feel defeated, but the devil is a liar. God will deliver you from them all, even on your job. Somebody is afflicted because you're wondering, God, how long do I have to wait to be healed? That somebody in this place has been working so hard morning, noon, and night, and your question is, God, how long do I have to wait until I get that promotion? While others are asking God, I prayed for so many people. I served for so many years. I, I'm faithful to the church. I see your mother and I live the best life I can. But how long do I have to wait for you to see about my family? Afflicted. Many are the affliction of the righteous. Let's deal with the righteous. The righteous are taken under special protection of the Lord. Yet, yeah, Lord. Their share, they had their share of crosses in the world. The afflictions of the righteous must be many, but whatever troubles before the righteous shall not hurt their souls. The affliction of the righteous, the weapons may form, but they shall not prosper. And as I close my sermon, I came to encourage somebody that this is not the first time that you've seen affliction. This is not the first time you've been through a test. This is not the first time you're depending on God to heal your broken heart. This is not the first time you need God to make a way out of no way. This is not the first time you need the Lord to deliver you out of depression and oppression. This it's not the first time you need God to handle a bill. This is not the first time you need him to check your spouse. This is not the first time you told your children that I brought you in this world and I take you out of here. And if God doesn't step in, there really might be an issue. This is not the first time you've been afflicted. And I simply came to remind you that if God did it before, then surely God can do it again. I need somebody to look back over your life and think about all the Lord has brought you through. Because reality is, some of us were afflicted through physical sickness, but the Lord healed your body. You were afflicted through emotional sickness, but the Lord gave you peace. He gave you peace that surpasses all understanding. You, you were afflicted in your finances, but the Lord gave you a financial breakthrough. You were afflicted through grief, but the Lord allowed the joy of the Lord to be your strength. You were afflicted when they lied on you. You were afflicted when they betrayed you. You were afflicted by the mistakes you made. You were afflicted by being homeless. You were afflicted by being on the streets when you were younger. Because we know you're all good now. You were afflicted by the cancer. Afflicted by the diabetes. Afflicted when they left you. Afflicted by the abuse. Afflicted 
by the rejection, afflicted by the mistreatment, afflicted by the loss of a loved one. But I came to encourage you that the Lord remembers you and he's still the same God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think and I know your affliction bought you some agony but I came to remind you but the Lord somebody say but the Lord but the Lord he is a restorer but the Lord is a way maker but the Lord is a deliverer but the Lord is a healer but the Lord is a keeper but the Lord he is love but the Lord he is peace but the Lord he is joy but the Lord he is a comforter but the Lord he is a mind regulator but the Lord is still a miracle worker and I know you are afflicted but we will obey the text we will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in our mouths his praise shall continually be in our mouths we ought to praise him because the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force praise him because all your good days outweigh your bad days praise him for your victory praise him because you are still more than a conqueror praise him because you're still in your right mind praise him because depression was not the end of your story. Praise him because your family will be delivered. Praise him until your body is healed. Praise him because fear will not overtake you. Praise him because what the enemy meant for evil God will still turn it around for your good. We can praise him because we are free. Praise the Lord. We are free. No longer, no longer bound. No more chains holding me. I came to announce this morning that you shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and I came to let you know it should be well with your soul and whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well with my soul and my last announcement is We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. When ordering, please be sure to include the message number. 
Until we meet again, remember, God's Word, our mission.